Hi friends, welcome back. Uh, today I'm talking fountain pens. In particular, what I thought about my mindset and considerations for commissioning a custom resin fountain pen. So, I, just as a little background, I started the fountain pen hobby back in April. So about four months ago, I went in hard and bought quite a few pens in my first month and a half, something like five and then a couple more in the next couple weeks. And then I took a break for a while. I really um, got used to them, started to learn them. I have a link in one of the corners um, for my collection video which is a little out of date now although not too bad um the only thing really that will influence this video that wasn't in there was i got a pilot vanishing point and a fine tip which i really really love but um so i had tried a few different brands a few different styles but i hadn't actually gone too far abroad, uh, mostly because there were some things I already knew I wasn't that interested in, so I didn't I didn't try it. So, for example, I'm not as interested in some people at trying lots of different filling mechanisms. I'm pretty much a cartridge converter kind of girl, um, mostly because I change ink a lot, and so the fact that you know, piston fillers can hold more ink is great, but like I would only be partially filling them anyway. I don't even usually do a full fill on my converters. I just, I don't use that much ink. I have too many pens and I like to switch them regularly. So that, that has kind of been a boundary in my exploration is just because that is not a thing that has interested me. In particular, you may feel differently. There are some really cool filling mechanisms out there. So the first step for me when thinking about maybe commissioning a custom pen was to like really know myself, know what I liked, know what was important to me. That's not to say that like those beliefs won't change over time. Um, you know, I'm only four months into the hobby, but I had done some of the exploring to know what I like. And so I was able to like go in with some of that in mind. So because I was commissioning a resin pen, most of these, and the one I did uses a, just a standard UO number six nib. Um, I had to know what what was going to work for me and what wasn't. So I knew from my explorations that I actually don't care that much about steel nibs versus gold nibs. I wasn't going to feel like I was missing something by using a steel nib instead of gold. And also, if we're doing interchangeable Yovo nibs, there are gold ones that I could buy down the road if I wanted to. So I didn't feel like I was like losing a lot by sticking to steel. As I mentioned, I knew I liked converters. So there are other custom pens that are like eyedropper converters or um, uh, like eyedropper filled or, uh, but for the most part, they're mostly like just your standard converter. And that was totally fine with me. The other thing I knew about myself was that I was really picky about resins and that I didn't want something that was a little too chaotic in feeling. I had looked at a lot of resin pens and while they're beautiful, they were a little, little much for me, which is like a weird thing for me to say because I really do like bright colors and um, kind of dramatic things but when I was looking at the pens that I had and the ones I was drawn to and the ones that I liked I liked something a little less out there for the pen body so that I, I wasn't constantly confused about what ink I was putting in it so I found that when I have a really dramatically colored uh, pen body 
I kind of assume that's the color of the ink inside and I don't actually fill in that way and so it, it's confusing. So I like to stay not like neutral but a little more plausibly neutral. Uh, I'm not sure that's really played out in my collection but I don't like kind of the really the really dramatic resins, the ones that have a lot going on. It's a little it's a little too much for me. The last thing is that I have learned about myself that I really it, you know, there's that, there's that draw of like, oh, I want to buy a new pen because I want this new experience, right? And when I look at it, the new experience that I'm looking for when I buy a new pen is a new nib experience. And so I really liked the idea of getting a Yovo number six nib that was easily interchangeable. And so then I could collect different nibs and not so much on different bodies. Storage space is limited, nibs are smaller. I mean, they'll still add up. I won't pretend they won't. And I'm sure that as I fall in love with different nibs, I will want more bodies to go with them so that I don't have to be swapping them out. But I really like the idea of interchangeable nibs and you know there are just a lot of options if you go with yoga number six so when i had taken stock of myself and what was going to make me the like happiest for the longest amount of time i mean obviously the consumerism is still rampant i'm not going to pretend it's not in myself so let's let's be honest about that but in terms of like what was I not going to immediately regret? Those were the things that like made me think, okay, that's what I'm gonna look for, for a custom pen. So then the story for me is that I fell in love with the Pelican White Tortoise, um, M200 or 205 or whatever it is. It's beautiful. I love the aesthetics of it. It's just, really good. However, that body style is a little small for me. It, it wasn't, it was smaller than I wanted for the amount that it cost, if that makes sense. And a lot of that is that it's got a really nice gold nib on it. Uh, but I don't actually care about the nib being gold. And also pelicans seem to run a little bigger and a little wetter than I'm personally interested in. So I didn't really want to pay that much money for a pen that wasn't going to give me the writing experience I wanted. Additionally, that's a piston fill pen. And again, I don't care. That's not, for some people that's adding value to the pen purchase. For me, it's not. And so the Pelican White Tortoise, while it's gorgeous, and while I still like drool when I see pictures of it on the internet, like it wasn't the right pen for me because I liked the way it looked, but none of the uh, none of the rest of it was bringing value, and so that was like my starting off point for a custom pen. Was like, okay, maybe I can recreate what I love about the aesthetics. Broadly speaking, we're not talking like direct copy. No one is going to confuse the pen I'm getting for a Pelican. Um, but like what elements of that am I really drawn to that I can take with me to a pen that is going to serve me better than the Pelican is. So that's when I started looking around the internet at different makers. And so um, I looked at so many. I will post a link to a Reddit thread where people um, have listed a ton of like custom makers. Uh, it's kind of an old thread. It's a little out of date. The person I ended up buying from is not on that list. Um, but it was a helpful experience to look at all of these people and to get a sense of what's possible, what's not possible, what styles, what's the wait time and whatever. So as I was looking through portfolios, I knew because I was coming with the idea that I wanted to kind of emulate this Pelican aesthetic, I knew it needed to have finials and a contrasting color. And honestly, that was enough to really narrow things down pretty significantly. A lot of people are not making them. They probably can if you ask, 
likely they could, but it is extra steps. It does add to the complexity of the pen and lots of people weren't posting pens like that. And I knew that was a thing I really wanted. Like maybe outsizedly so, but I was here for the aesthetics. And so I wanted the like the look that I wanted. And so for me, that was really narrowing it down. I also didn't want to eight, wait eight months for a custom pen. Um, the people who are doing those are those really elaborate pens really have gained a lot of um, following and for good reason there's a long wait time like I don't begrudge that in the least but if I'm only four months into the hobby eight months from now what about what I want will have changed like I'm not ready now to buy a pen for eight months from now. Um, I expect that some of the, my preferences will change in that time. And I also knew that during that time, if I had to wait that long, I was going to be buying other pens. Um, I don't know about you, but when I buy things on the internet, you know, the like that feeling of that rush of joy of like, yes, it's happening is pretty short lived until it actually arrives. And so I was going to be waiting, feeling guilty if I bought anything else, but still wanting to buy other things. So it was not the right situation for me at the time. Your mileage may vary. So I ended up narrowing it down and working with a little independent pen maker called Just Turnings and I will leave a link to his Instagram and Facebook page and information below. He's based in Australia which is a long ways from you know Michigan where I live but he was doing creating the kinds of things that I was interested in. I really liked the things he was posting on his Instagram, both of what I wanted to have made and also things where I was like, oh, I'd like to have that made someday, you know, like not scratching the current itch that I have, but coming up with new itches. Um, and so it seemed like the right match for me and when I talked to him his wait time was between two and four weeks and that was really appealing. Now obviously it took some time for us to work out what I wanted. That took a couple weeks and it took some time for him to make it and it took some time for it to get here from Australia even though I paid for expedited shipping. Global shipping is a process these days. so. All in all, from order, well, no, from first contact to arrival was about six or seven weeks. Um, it's set to get delivered today, which I'm very excited about and very nervous. Um, so that was a timeline I could work with. I felt like we were making progress at regular intervals that could keep me going. Did I buy one other pen during that time? Yes, but only one. So, although well, that pen doesn't fit any of the things on this list, but we will talk about that pen another time. Uh, so I went ahead and contacted him. He was so nice. I was not particularly decisive. I knew exactly how I wanted it to look, Vaguely, both exactly and vaguely. I had a very strong picture of the general aesthetics. However, I did not know what resin I wanted and it was a process, I'm not gonna lie. He was very kind. Um, but when I'm picky about resins, it turns out that's like not so helpful. So he sent me a bunch of pictures and also then he thankfully reminded me that he was going to be turning and like narrowing away at the blank and so the exterior of the blank I was looking at is not going to be what the exterior of my pen looked like once he had put it on the lathe. Which obviously it's not, I don't know what I was thinking, but I'm very thankful he pointed that out. So the whole thing threw me for a tailspin. 
so I'm sharing that with you just in case that's helpful for you to remember that the outside is not going to look the same once you've taken away the outside um, on the lathe. So we finally narrowed something down and it's coming in the mail very soon. It's set to be delivered today. In the intervening weeks, I have not regretted any of the choices I made. Generally, my personality is such that I have a lot of difficulty making a decision, but I tend to stick with the decision and not regret it or overthink it afterwards, usually. But I will say that the intervening weeks have made me very nervous, like in an anticipatory way. Is it going to look like how I imagine what's going to happen? Now he would have sent me a picture of it um, when it was finished, but I didn't actually want that. So he's, but I did want to confirm that it was right. So he sent me like a pixelated version, so I couldn't see exactly how the resin turned out, but I could confirm that like the pen looked right um, because I'd gotten like the finials and the X trim, and, and he'd gotten all of that really nicely. I'll post a picture here of my sketch that I sent him um, so you can compare what it looks like. Again, I didn't have a specific idea for the resin, so I wasn't trying to match the resin in the sketch to this one. But anyway, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the mindset I had going into this and how it kind of evolved as I went through the process because there are some things I hadn't thought of. There are some things you might not think of. So I just figured I'd share that before we dive in and unbox it. I cannot wait. So uh, the last thing is that obviously he's a pen turner. He doesn't do nib work. And I have ordered a custom nib for the pen elsewhere and that will be coming in a couple weeks still. So I am getting both a custom nib and a custom pen body, but they are coming separately and today we'll just be talking about the body. But now that you have all the backstory, I hope you found that helpful if you're considering doing your own custom pen and if you aren't or have before, I hope you found it interesting to see what my thought process was going in. Now it's time to see how it all paid off. Let's go. All right, I just got the notification that this was delivered. Today is August 23rd. I just looked at my history and it looks like I started the conversation on July 6th. So it's been about a month and a half, although a lot less time between when I decided on something and um and when it actually got here i did pay for expedited shipping from australia which i'm glad i did because uh australia post is not currently its best self at the moment so i'm gonna try and get in here seems very well bubble wrapped more layers oh look a little bow Extremely well packaged, for sure. So, here's his business card. I'll put a link below as well. He was so nice to work with. All right. Here we go, the moment of truth. I am so excited, but I am also so nervous because I haven't seen it. I've seen a pixelated version that he sent me, but I haven't seen it. I know it's not going to be exactly how I pictured it, and that's not going to mean that it's a bad thing or that I don't like it, but I know that like my gut reaction is going to be like a little, a little surprised, so let's go. So, 
Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Okay, I'm already, I'm already coming around. So this is the name of the material. It's from RJ Custom Pens. The name of the resin was Hummingbird. Wow, this is pretty. Okay. Deep, deep breath, sigh of relief. It's lighter than I expected, uh, which is not a bad thing, but I recently got this um, narwhal, which might be made of ebonite, and it's so heavy. <laughs> and I've, because I only got it a couple days ago, I've been playing with it a lot, and this one is way lighter. But I got the contrasting finials, but I did go with the green section because I didn't want to deal with the possibility of staining the section. So this isn't exactly what I expected the resin to look like. Am I in focus here? I didn't know that it would have this glowy like glitter thing going on. I'm probably glad I didn't know because I would have been worried about it. I really like it in person, but I think I would have um, been worried. This like bright green, I didn't really expect. I'm glad there's not a ton of it, but that amount is just fine. But I do love the like yellow gold that's going on here and how it looks with the gold. Um, hardware, I did like request all the extra finials. I just love like trim. So I got a broad nib. I do have a custom nib coming um, that I will put on here. Um, so I, I knew this was just a placeholder for now and I wanted something to kind of broaden my writing experience and I don't have a single broad. Uh, the narwhal was once a broad, or maybe a double broad, but it's a, a an italic grind now. So look how pretty it is. All of the like, all of the um, connections are really nice. I'll put a link to um, Steven's YouTube channel. Um, he's got a whole video series on how he makes his pens. Like, they're not necessarily intended for customers. They're for, like, fellow makers. Uh, but, but it is interesting. Oh, and he sent a sample. And, oh, I bet this is going to match really nice. I, I expect he thought about this. This is Robert Oster Chartreuse, which is not a color I have. And I think it's going to look awesome. So standard international converter. I think this is a Schmidt. Let's, uh, that nib is not going to fit in this little vial. I love this. This is a great sized vial. So let's just I won't do a full fill. I don't really know what I want to ink this up with long term. But Oh, and Robert Oster, I believe, is an Australian brand, now that I think about it. Okay, so I've got it inked. I finally I cleaned it out. I got it inked. And now we can do a little bit of writing. I apologize. This chartreuse ink is a little light I think for on camera. I did discover that it posts. It's a little back heavy and um, too long for me. Back posted, um, uh, posted, but I'm glad to have the option when it doesn't, when there's nowhere to set it down, but I will just set it down. Um, so here's the writing sample. So this is the Robert Oster Chartreuse ink in my Just Turnings. It looks like the model name he gives this is the Best Love. 
with the number six Yovo and broad. This is pen number 484. And the name of the resin is RJ Custom Pens Hummingbird. And uh, I was nervous when I, I didn't, I was nervous because I didn't know how broad, broad would be. And it's really, it's not bad. So that's compared to my, this is my Diplomat Magnum, which has a number five medium, but it's kind of springy. So like it could be lighter, but it tends to be pretty similar, honestly. And then this is like the custom ground italic narwhal. And this one is way broader. So this is honestly really functional um, the size. And so, and here if we're comparing it, this is my vanishing point fine. So this is still like my preferred size for just note taking. This is maybe more for like headers or whatever. Um, but it's not like so broad that I'm worried about like how I would use it. Now I do have a custom nib coming and I will probably swap it out for that. But in the meantime, I will use this for sure. So final thoughts. It's beautiful. I was nervous. Not because I didn't trust Steven, because I had looked at his portfolio and I thought it was beautiful. Um, and he was really kind of listening to what I wanted and suggesting things. So it wasn't that, but like the anticipa anticipation of weeks had meant that I'd kind of gotten in my head and I was like terrified I'd open the box and that it would be beautiful, but that it wouldn't be what I wanted. And I am like so thankful for that not to be the case. Like this is just really, really beautiful. And I do like the white. It feels like I have accomplished what I set out to get made and I'm really thankful for it. So thank you, Steven. I'll put all of the links below. And um, if you are interested in doing a custom pen, leave a comment below and let me know, like, what would you want to design? I would love to hear it. If you've been nervous about resin like I have, I mean, there are some really dramatic ones, but there are some really more understated ones. I don't, I don't know that I'd call this one understated exactly, but there are some really beautiful ones that don't have quite the same uh, visual chaos necessarily. So. And when you work with someone, you can choose your individual resin. Now, I've discussed some of the impacts of that, uh, but it's really fun and really satisfying. And I'm so excited to add this to my collection. So thanks for hanging out with me. If you liked what you saw, hit the subscribe button and I will talk to you soon. Bye, friends.